back with you. Um, I've been getting questions about how to solve statics problems. That seems like a pretty good thing for a video, so let's do that. Um, what I'm going to do is show you how to solve a real basic statics problem for a cantilevered beam, but more importantly, we're going to go over what are the exact steps for solving a statics problem. And these steps are going to be the same no matter what the kind of problem is. They're universally applicable, so it's, it, this is a good way to learn that. Um, so I'm going to start here. Let's say we've got a beam, and it's a cantilevered beam. Okay, cantilevered means it's fixed. Okay, so fixed means like it's it's. Imagine it's sunk into a block of concrete, so it can't move. All right. I had a friend take a look at that and say, why do you put a comb on the end of it? Well, it's not a comb. This is meant to mean that whatever it's hooked to won't move, so that the displacement is zero at this end, and the slope is at this end. That's called zero at this end. That's called a cantilevered beam. It has to have a weight on it, or else it's not very interesting. So let's say, sitting on the end of this cantilevered beam, all right, is, oh, let's say, a college professor in perhaps late middle age. And let's say that college professor weighs, oh, maybe 900 newtons, okay? Right, that's that's uh, awfully close to 200 pounds if you want to do that in uh, metric unit or in uh, English units, and that's about what I weigh. So there you go, and we're given that. So let's find the reaction force and the reaction moment. Well, what's a reaction force and a reactant at reaction moment? Well, if a weight is being applied here and that beam is not supposed to, to twist like that, clearly, I've got a cantilevered beam right here, happens to be full of, of uh, op amps, but whatever. There, there's a cantilevered beam. If I'm going to push, let's see if I can do this, if I'm going to push right there, put a load on there with, with this hand, two things have to happen over here. I have to, there has to be a force up, okay, to resist this load. That's the reaction force and a reaction moment. That's something to keep it from twisting. Okay, I have to apply a moment at this end to keep the beam from doing that. That's the reaction moment. So that's what a reaction force and reaction moment are. Well, how do you do this? Well, all right. There's a couple of steps. One. Okay. There is a, what they call a working drawing or a working diagram. Okay. And that's draw a picture of what's going on. Well, that's that's a working diagram. It doesn't have to be uh, artwork, but it does have to be clear, right? It has to show, clearly show what's going on. And this clearly shows what's going on. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to have all the forces and moments in it. That's what comes next. The next step, okay, is a free body diagram. Okay, that's we'll do that next year. That's the, the diagram that really does show all the forces and moments and doesn't have anything else on it. Okay, it doesn't have any complicating details, only forces and moments. Well, what's step three? Okay, write equations that these are actually called equations of static equilibrium. I guess I'll can I call that equations of equilibrium? I'll get my head out of your way here in a second. Okay, equations of equilibrium, because remember, if, we're, uh, if we don't speak with numbers, it's just an opinion, all right? I don't know about you, I want my bridges designed by people who know how to speak with numbers, all right? Just, maybe it's just me. Um, so last thing, this is the obvious one, solve. Well, we've got equations right there. Let's solve for something, seems reasonable. So we've got the working diagram done, that's okay. Next thing we want to do is draw a free body diagram. Okay, well this is more technical. It looks a little less like the actual problem. It's a little more uh, abstract, but much more clear when you're trying to write equations of equilibrium. So I've got a force down here that I know is 900 newtons. Okay, that's the professor. Okay, now over here there has to be a, res a force resisting. Now I'm going to guess it's that direction. So it's only got one other force. Yeah, it's, it's probably up. 
Um, I also need a, a system of coordinates. Okay, it helps if you use the same coordinate system most of the time. Unless I have a pretty good reason, I'll use that one. Okay, now if I have a pretty good reason, like I'm on a, a problem that is slanted somehow, or rotated at an angle, of course I'll rotate that to match. But for right now, that's a pretty good coordinate system to use. So I've got that. Now one more thing I need is a moment. Okay, and I'm going to draw the moment like that. This is the res resisting moment. This is the force and the moment that concrete block has to exert on that beam to keep the professor from falling off. Okay, so here's what we've got. There's the coordinate system. So we've got a free body diagram. By the way, what if I guess wrong on the uh, res uh, res uh, resisting moment and the resisting force? Well, if I get those wrong, they'll come out negative. The math will take care of me. If I were to draw this with the arrow down, my, my uh, res uh, re resisting force would be negative instead of positive. That's okay. That's the math kind of taking care of you. So we've done that, done that. Equations of equilibrium. Well, this is a 2D problem, and uh, there's only uh, motions in the x and y direction, and there's only moment in the z direction, going from x to y. So this is going to be pretty simple. Well, there's no forces in the x direction. I don't need to write that one. In the uh, y direction, okay, the sum of the forces in the y direction, the sum has to be zero, right? If it's not, it's not static. It's a dynamics problem. Well, we already said this is a statics problem. We're going, by the way, the professor sitting on the end of this beam really wants this to be a static problem, not a dynamic problem. So let's do it that way. So this is an equation of equilibrium right here. And let's actually write that out a little more carefully. Okay, so FR is positive because it goes in the direction of Y there. Minus 900 Newtons. Okay, and that has to equal zero. So that's, that's one equation of equilibrium. The other one, the sum of the moment, also has to be zero. Well, I can sum moments about any point that I like, and the, the equation will work no matter what point I pick. Well, let's pick this one out right there, and I don't know what that, I have to call it something. So I'll call that point right there A, and I'll put a moment and A right there, just so we know that's the point about which we're summing moments. The nice part about this is if I put it there, the arm about what it's acting on, on for, uh, the reaction force R is zero, so this doesn't matter. Well, this, okay, is positive, goes in the uh, counterclockwise direction, just like my assumed positive. So that's going to be MR, okay? And this one I'm going to have, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you the distance. Sorry about that, guys. My bad. Sorry about that. It's five meters, okay? So I've got a distance there now. And that's going to be minus, because this is, this is going to exert a moment in the clockwise direction. Alrighty. And positive is counterclockwise, so this must be negative. Okay. Five meters times 900 newtons. And that also has to be zero. So those are my two equations of equilibrium. So I'll check that off. Last thing I need to do is solve. Well, let's solve that one. If FR minus 900 equals zero, then FR is 900 newtons. Okay, and that's not too surprising because it's the only force acting on the beam. Now, I'm assuming this beam is light enough that the mass of the beam is negligible. So maybe we want to write this up there. Negligible. Oh, I can't spell today. I think that's right. Mass of the beam is negligible. Small enough to be ignored and you still get about the right answer. So I don't know what that beam is made out of. Some sort of crazy monocrystalline diamond unobtainium composite. Something. It's much, much lighter than the professor sitting on it. Okay? So we've got, getting back to this, we've solved this equation of motion. All right, well, let's solve this one now. Well, uh, the reaction moment uh, minus, that's going to be 4,500 newton meters is zero. So, reaction moment is 
4,500 newton meters. So there you go. We've solved a simple statics problem. All right. One more time, let's go through the process. We have a working diagram with all the information we need on it, and I know I added some stuff later, sorry about that. A statement of what it is we're trying to find. So that's, that's our working diagram. Then we went to the free body diagram, a much simplified, much more abstract, cleaned up drawing that has only the forces and moments on it. Sometimes you put some, some lengths or some distances on here, that's okay too. Second, equations of equilibrium. That's a 50 cent way of saying the sum of the forces is zero and the sum of the moments are zero. And the last is solve, which we did down here. So if you want to uh, uh, break statics down to its simplest things, there's not a lot of theory here. Sum of the moments equals zero, sum of the forces equals zero, you can't push a rope. Everything else is detail. So I hope that helps, and I'll talk to you next time.